Hello, I had some interest in looking at my settings in SharpCat when capturing Mars near opposition. Um, I think it's best to go through basically capturing SharpCat because it's going to vary, the settings are going to vary depending on what telescope and object you're imaging. So in a moment I'm going to open up SharpCat and we'll take a look. I'll get rid of that because I don't want to do any updates go to the drop down menu where my camera is, once it's plugged in it will show up dark and you can pick it off the menu. I'm using the ZBO 462 I'm using the RGB 24 colour space because it's easier to process but you may want to progress on to RAW 8 which is a bit more precise. I'm putting my exposure up so I can see where Mars is, make sure it's on the sensor. I've defocused to check collimation of my Newtonian, you can see the secondary mirror in the middle there bits in the middle of the defocus disc indicating that I'm roughly collimated so hopefully that will produce some sharp images and just while we're doing that I want to point out the gain setting below the exposure a lot of people have that set higher so it's like ISO if you increase the ISO like in your camera you can have a lower exposure which means your frame rate can go up you can capture more images before the planet rotates so more sharp images for stacking for a better final image but I, I like to look at my video files I like them clean so I've set mine quite low at 70 odd gain and there I am just starting to focus down now and I'll bring that exposure down so I can start to see some detail on the planet and you can see Certis Major there the triangular shape and the polar cap I'll go on the dark side so I don't blow out the highlights when I'm post processing and uh, yeah I think we pretty much ready now to sort of pick a smaller region of interest which is going to make the planet look bigger so we can do a final focus more precisely a focus mask will really help with that but I've not got one for this uh, telescope and also having a smaller region of interest uses less computing power which puts your frame rate up the only downside is you need good tracking to keep your planet on the smaller region of interest so once I've got a smaller region of interest, I'm happy that I can keep the planet on it. I will start my capture in a moment. I'm sure once I've just tweaked the focus one last time, you can sit wobbling about as I'm playing with the focus knob, just trying to make sure I've got the, the focus dialed in best I can without a focus mask. If you're using if you're imaging Jupiter, you can you can use the uh, pinpoint looking moons to help you focus. Or if you're using GoTo, you can go on a star first and then slew over to the planet. But yeah, so at some point I will be, because I'm narrating this in hindsight, uh, yeah, I'll go up and start my capture and pick a file name so I can find it afterwards. It will be in a folder you'll be able to find it in a folder on your desktop afterwards. Just a good idea to name it. So I am, you can look on the bottom left hand corner, it just tells you how many frames you're stacking. Mars rotates roughly, Mars's day is roughly the same as Earth's day, give or take less than an hour. Um, it basically means we can film it for a couple of minutes before we start to risk sort of kind of any rotation blur. Hopefully I can capture a few thousand frames in that time and that means if we stack 25% of the best frames that's more of the best frames to stack to get a better final image so I'll let that run and do its thing and enjoy the video on the screen So it looks like we're getting a good few thousand frames there. And then we'll stop that there and it will just tell you where the folder is. And the green banner will come up showing you the location of the folder so you can find the file 
and take it on to the next stage, which will be stacking and processing, which I won't cover in this video. I'll link a, a similar video, planetary processing video at the end where I do cover the um, stacking and processing. But what I'll do now is I'll just put on screen the final result of this image after I've ran through auto stack art for stacking and Registacks for processing and I also put in GIMP for some final touches and this is what the final image looks like after you do that. Okay, thanks very much for watching. A special thank you to my channel members Dan the Man, 4 Grapples and Ziggy Friends. Um, if you enjoyed the content please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and until next time clear skies and tell those clouds to sod off.